My name is Brendan and I am the social media manager for Sunrise Daisy Retreat. I post special projects like the wellness blog, our fundraising efforts and volunteer appreciation to Facebook, Instagram and Twitter for Sunrise Daisy. As Grace mentioned in the previous episode, our annual wellness day has been postponed by the coronavirus pandemic. Like many people who have been isolated and away from their communities, we hope to reach each other through the online platforms that have opened, grown, and expanded in the past two decades. Social media platforms have received more critical attention over the past several years, so the question of how they support or hinder our emotional, physical, and mental well being, both individually and as a collective, seems to be at the forefront of people's minds, especially as they inform our habits for better or for worse. For many of us, the pandemic has exacerbated dependence on social media. Every spare second is an opportunity to be stimulated and momentarily boost our mood with a like, a follow, or just a few moments of distraction. But it's crucial to take time to just be, to put our devices down, not just to become used to being with our own thoughts, but also to locate ourselves in our own bodies and experience what it's like to be in an uninterrupted flow. While we figure out how to enjoy social media in moderation, elusive, I know, we can also turn our attention to the mental health benefits it gives us from connecting us to the people, places, and things that contribute to our emotional and mental well being, all key to recovery from cancer treatment. While Sunrise Daisy has a presence on the big three social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, there are other platforms that offer more personal ways to connect and be of service to people in our communities, like GoFundMe, Caring Bridge, and Patreon. To speak from my own experience, I want to offer you a few brief slides of the powerful and moving, but also smaller and subtler ways that social media has impacted my life and those in my community for the better. These restorative examples fuel my passions for nature, music, and contemplative care, adding to the holistic practices and aspects of wellness that I offer online. On Instagram, I recently began following hashtags for the native plants that I fell in love with and that remind me of the monastery where I used to live in California. Hummingbird sage was uh, surprisingly featured at a local plant shop here in Portland. So I picked one up and planted it allowing me to smell the leaves and touch the deeper memory and feelings that the fragrance brings back to me. On Patreon, I follow the all-volunteer run radio station Freeform Portland. I support and contribute content along with our other supporters and DJs. And that funding that we get supports us to broadcast music 24 seven. It uh, gives me a creative outlet. It showcases creative work of others in our community all through regular mixtape posts. On Facebook, I shared the GoFundMe page I created for a dear friend who is undergoing spinal surgery, and that attracted 56 donations from friends and community members. They put funds towards six months of her needed living expenses. On Caring Bridge, I documented my in-person visit to pass along the donations and offer my in-person presence during her recovery. Last but not least, the Sunrise Daisy pages on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are always offering resources and affirming mental, emotional, and physical well being through featured posts from wellness providers and content creators. Not to mention our video wellness blog, which features our volunteer board members and admin team. So we ask you if you'll please share this important work with your friends and family and colleagues on social media spread the word, uh, the mental health benefits that we get from care, connection, and creativity and interaction over the digital medium really contributes to our communities and the benefits cannot be overstated. <laughs>